Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. I'm so glad you've been able to join us for our pre-service meditation. 
So we're going to take the next 10 minutes. It's an opportunity to just get still. And so I invite you to make sure you are comfortably seated wherever you are. And to relax, maybe take a nice, deep, relaxing breath. And as you exhale, just release any tension in the body. And with another nice, deep breath, as you release that breath, release any thoughts about the past or the future. And just let your awareness come into the now. And we use the breath as a focal point, something we can just focus on to keep our attention in the now moment. So noticing the in-breath and the out-breath, and if it helps you to maintain focus, you might silently say to yourself, breathing in and breathing out. And if the mind wanders, this is an opportunity to cultivate non-judgment, to cultivate that witness consciousness where you can just observe where your mind has gone. Maybe you're noticing a sound, so you might label that hearing. Maybe you're noticing a feeling, a sensation. You might label that feeling or just simply thinking. But I invite you to just be with that for a moment and notice maybe if there are any emotions around the thoughts that are coming up. And just observe. There's no judgment. Just observe. And then when you've been with that for just a few moments, very gently and compassionately, bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in. Breathing out.
And so I invite you to gently bring your awareness back into your bodies, becoming aware of your surroundings. Take another nice deep breath. Maybe shrug your shoulders, wiggle your fingers and toes. And as you feel ready, bring your attention back into the room. So once again, welcome to our Wednesday evening service, our virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Special welcome to those of you who joined us during our meditation. Let's begin our service as we always do with our opening chant led by the wonderful Margaret Owens. So with that, please join me in prayer. Absolutely knowing that God is in this place because God is everywhere present. That truly God is the one life, the one power out of which everything comes into being. And this one life of God is moving and having its being throughout all creation, is fully and equally present everywhere in the universe, including in, through, around, and as each and every one of us gathered for this virtual service this evening. I absolutely know that we are feeling the impulse of God for a greater knowingness, realization, experience of itself through each of us, and I know this service supports that intention. I know that God is unfolding through every part of it, as that love vibration in which we feel interconnected, as that love vibration that absolutely inspires each person who is of service this evening. It is that love and inspiration of spirit that we feel moving through Margaret, who leads us in our chants and performs this evening. And I know it is that love and inspiration of spirit that operates through me as this message comes forth, it is a message that we've all come to hear. I know it is a message of God to awaken us to the truth of who we are as expressions of the one. And so I give thanks for all the blessings we receive in our time together, knowing it is all of God. I say, thank you, God. And I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let me be the hand to guide you, I'm the gentle voice inside you, not the one that hounds or blames you, not the one that haunts and shames you, I will show you a light away, I will promise a brighter day for you, deserve to feel safe, and you deserve Got your worth for you to were a holy birth. I don't need wise men to name it or the angels to proclaim it. You are part of the grand design. You are blessed and you are mine. And you deserve to feel safe. And you deserve. to you miracles can happen through you all these things and even greater when you're one with your creator and you deserve to feel safe and you deserve to feel loved Thank you, Margaret. And thank you for the technology that allows us, when we don't have a music director with us, <laughs> to still have music. Um, that's wonderful. And thank you to the creativity of Blair for these uh, slides. That, uh, If you were wondering why Margaret was standing in front of an image of uh, trees covered in snow, my topic this evening is melting our frozen mind patterns. So just in case you didn't get it, wanted you to you know, really be on board with this. So I recently came across this idea of frozen thoughts and um, mind patterns in relation to the acceptance of religious dogma. That um, the author of this article I was reading was making the point that you know, all religious traditions at their core promote qualities like love, kindness, respect, peace, spiritual qualities that are really very fluid. You know, those, there are a million different ways that those qualities can show up. Then from there, 
Each tradition tends to offer ideas of ways that love can be shared, finite, solid forms and finite, solid ideas about good, bad, right, and wrong. And depending on the degree to which followers of different traditions embody the dogma of that teaching, the fine ideas and rituals that need to be followed about what's right and wrong, and this very spiritual essence that is so fluid, formless, becomes solidified in people's minds in ways that actually could impede the expression of unconditional love and kindness, because now we have ideas of you have to be this way, you have to be this way, this is the way to practice, this is the right way, and that isn't. And those are like taking that very fluid quality of spirit and freezing it into these forms and saying this is, this is the way it has to be. And I consider myself really fortunate, I know you've probably heard me Many of you uh, have heard me speak about this before, that I was raised in a very, very liberal Catholicism. You know, my mom had grown up in Southeast Asia, and her mom had taught her to respect all religions and even people who didn't belong to a religion. She says, God loves everyone equally. There is no right or wrong path, which was very, very ahead of its time in terms of way of thinking. And so, we were, uh, my siblings and I were raised to, um, you know, also accept all traditions. And basically, my mom said, as far as the faith tradition that we were in, Catholicism, she said, take the good, take the part that's about love, take the part that's about learning to love more and more unconditionally. And anything else, any other dogma that we're being taught, just, you know, if it didn't feel right, if it didn't feel in alignment with keeping our hearts and minds open, then we should question it. And this was at a time that messages from the pulpit were saying that if you weren't Christian, well, you probably weren't going to get to heaven after this lifetime. And actually, if you weren't Catholic, if you were some other Christian tradition, you were kind of on shaky ground. you know. And we're being taught that oh, come on, all religions are fine. As long as people are loving and kind to each other, that's what God seeks to express. And um, so our key uh, tenet to follow was, you know, if what others are doing isn't in any way harmful to others, let them be. Let them be. So... I came across a situation just, it was about a year ago, I know, because it was not too long before we all went into lockdown uh, with everything with the pandemic, and um, visiting with a friend who uh, is Catholic. She's a little bit older than I am, but also from our conversations, I'd found that she was very progressive, very open to new ideas, open to the idea that, you know, dogma of different religions can actually uh, be harmful and that it should be questioned. And so at one point she was talking about a situation with her sister where her sister decided to um, follow a different Christian tradition. Um, so she, in a sense, left the Catholic Church but found this other church that she was drawn to. And in that church, they performed adult baptisms and so she decided she wanted to be baptized in that tradition, which in the Catholic Church you're baptized as an infant, as a baby. And this friend of mine told me that she refused to attend because she felt this was crazy, what her sister was doing. You only get baptized once. It was wrong. And that really surprised me because, you know, she had been so open-minded about other things. So knowing that she was open-minded and liked to question dogma, I started to, you know, question that rationale that she had had. And I said, you know, how was what her sister doing, even if she herself, if my friend didn't agree with it, how was her sister doing anything that was harmful? And why 
couldn't she be supported in choosing her own path? And I also pointed out, you know, baptism of babies did not occur in Jesus's time. It was centuries later that that practice was adopted. Um, and then I went on to talk about, wasn't baptism more s symbolic of the idea of ridding ourselves of original sin, which original sin is the whole idea of knowledge of good and evil, of duality, of our feeling separate from God. And so, you know, whatever rituals we adopt are symbolic. So how could, again, this be harmful? I even went into, and some of you may have heard my talk about, I found it kind of blasphemous if you really take the traditional idea of baptism as being something that is necessary for the human to get into heaven, that basically a creation of God needs to be fixed by some kind of human process for God to then accept that creation. And the most interesting thing happened as I was sharing these ideas is my friend didn't have that look of engaged curiosity. She did not have that expression of, hmm, I hadn't thought of it that way. That's interesting. I should think about that. I could see that some of what I was saying made sense, but the more it made sense, I noticed her getting very uncomfortable, her body tensing up, obviously not accepting what I was saying because, you know, she had her very frozen thoughts about this subject. And guess what? I then found myself tensing up to harden to kind of feel indignation that, you know, she was being so rigid. And thank heavens for this practice, you know, for these practices that we uh, really promote in Science of Mind, because I noticed my inner response and was able to take a breath and to realize that her dogmatic thinking felt threatening to me. And so as I took that breath, Something softened, and as I allowed myself to soften, you know, in a sense to apply warmth to those frozen thoughts in me that triggered that hardening of my heart, I could see that my thoughts had made an impact. And I could tell that she understood what I was saying, but if I kept hammering on those ideas, that it would be counterproductive that she wasn't in a place to hear them. She heard enough, but it was at a point that this could create conflict. And I thought, this is not my job <laughs> to try and convince her. I just was sharing something. And so I look back now and say, well, what happened there? Her frozen ideas about the way things have to be in terms of religious dogma and rituals caused her to feel threatened and tense up when different viewpoints that I was presenting were being presented. They probably prevented her from having an experience of love and support with her sister. They got in the way of the flow of love. My frozen ideas about people need to be more open-minded and that if they weren't, that somehow that was a threat to me, that brought up my feelings of hostility. We all have what I would label as frozen mind patterns around what's right or wrong, what's good or bad, labels that we assign to things, to situations, and to ourselves. And they impact how we experience life. They prevent us in many cases from experiencing that ever so fluid flowing nature of the divine. And often we're not even aware of them until life presents us with situations in which they're challenged. So we can see that nothing in the world is as absolute as we think it is. 
nothing in this world, no idea, no ideology, no, uh, no situation is as absolute and permanent as we think it is. Only God, only the underlying nature of spirit is absolute. And some of you may have heard me share about an experience where that was made so clear to me of how we are even unaware of this condition type of thinking, these frozen thoughts. Years back, um, when I was with an ex-partner of mine, when we were visiting uh, Paris, and we were in a restaurant for lunch, and he had ordered beef bourguignon for lunch, and then I asked him, well, what are you gonna have to drink? And he looked at me and he said, oh, I'd like to have a cafe au lait. And my immediate response, I, who is like, whatever, let people be, as long as it's not hurting anyone. My response was, no. And he looked at me so shocked, like, what do you mean, no? And I thought, you, you don't have my, my frozen thoughts from my French upbringing about you do not drink café au lait with beef bourguignon. It's just, it, it isn't done, no. <laughs> and... Event, you know, when we discussed it, I explained, and uh, he eventually backed down because there was no way I was going to order that <laughs> for him. But my response, you know, if I, I'm not saying that if I had been softer, I would have gone along with ordering it because personally, when I travel, I like to honor the traditions of the country. And if something is really out of whack, I don't necessarily, I don't want to be the one to make people uncomfortable, but a statement like, it's really not the tradition to order coffee, or especially cafe au lait, with a meal here. It might really be shocking. Um, can we go along with the tradition as opposed to no? Those are two different responses. And the beauty of science of mind of this teaching is it really helps us to become aware of those frozen mind patterns that can limit our experience or expression of God's goodness. You know, those rigid thoughts that we carry about how things should be, how they should not be, how we fit in or don't fit in, how this is good and this is bad, and completely denying or forgetting the underlying lying nature of God that's always there to be called forth no matter what's happening in the outer world. When we're regularly engaging in our spiritual practices like prayer and affirmation, regularly reminding ourselves of that divine nature of God, that's what's most true and most real about us, what's most true and most real about all beings, then we're more likely to notice when those frozen thought patterns, when that conditioned thinking shows up and we begin to react out of that mindset because we're, we've been reminding ourselves of the truth so much we're more likely to notice when those thought patterns are out of alignment with truth. And again, I know I emphasize this a lot, but meditation, getting still, centering, that's an invaluable tool to building that muscle to notice how we're responding, to notice reactions that are coming up. If something is coming up that feels very reactive and negative, there's some kind of mind pattern going on that's driving that, that is out of alignment with the truth of God being present right there in that moment. And so it gives us the ability to pause and respond rather than just immediately react. And so what I would encourage us to do is to be mindful of those times where we feel ourselves tensing up. Because you know the old expression, as within, so without. When we have rigid or frozen thinking that doesn't let us look at things in an open-hearted way, that very solid, rigid thinking generally shows up as some kind of tensing up, rigidity in the body. So we tend to freeze up. And the way to bring warmth to kind of melt 
that frozen mode of thinking is to move toward relaxing both in body and mind, inwardly and outwardly. So we want to remind ourselves that whatever it is we're responding to out there, you know, whatever distasteful thinking or behavior or situation, whatever's going on out there isn't concrete. Everything out there in the world is changeable. Okay, so we can start there. Just take a breath, pause, and remember that God in us is bigger than any finite thought pattern, pattern with a simple affirmation like, God is the love that I am, that we use so often. Just pausing and reminding ourselves, God is the love that I am. Immediately, we, we just start to soften. We start to melt that rigid mind pattern to give ourselves the opportunity to step back and see things from a higher perspective. It, it allows us to shed light on those limiting frozen thoughts and open to seeing things in a more uplifted, loving way. And it doesn't mean that we go along with everything, but in looking at things in that softer, more fluid way, we're more likely to see how to respond constructively rather than react from that place of rigidity and fear. So let's, let's work with that a little bit. So I invite you to just take this opportunity to turn your attention inward. And let's work with the frozen mind patterns that cause us to shut down our hearts to others. So I invite you to call to mind someone whose behaviors or ways of thinking are extremely distasteful or objectionable to you. And as you think about this person and how much you object to them or their ways, tune in to notice where parts of you tense up physically. Just be aware that this is an internal response of being or feeling threatened, feeling separate from God. And I invite you to take a nice breath, and as you release it, relax those areas where you feel tense stuck. Silently repeat, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Allow yourself to relax into this knowingness of God's loving lovingness, God's nature in you being untainted by this experience, greater than any perceived threat. And allow yourself to be aware that no matter how objectionable you find the behaviors or ways of thinking of this person, they're changeable. They're not permanent. Feel those frozen mind patterns in you begin to melt. Just feel the tension begin to melt and your heart opening to the idea that there are ways to deal with the situation constructively. You don't have to agree. You don't have to go along with objectionable thoughts and behaviors, but there's a way to deal with them constructively. And just know that through this little exercise, you've begun the process to open your heart to a solution, to the pathways of healing versus staying frozen in a sense of contempt 
and alienation. You've opened up to letting more of God's nature to flow through you. And so from this place, let's join in consciousness to know the truth about many of the situations that we face along our human path. Knowing that God truly is the one nature out of which all is created and that lives in all, including each and every one of us. Let us absolutely know the truth that where anyone is feeling any kind of discomfort with change, change that is occurring in the human world, we know that the world is changing all the time, but the nature of God out of which everything is created is birthless, deathless, changeless. And so as this truth becomes more fully accepted, any discomfort with change just dissolves, melts away. Let us remember that this vibration of spirit is one of perfect wholeness, health, well-being. And so where there is any experience of dis-ease or discord going on, let us know the greater truth of that divine pattern of perfection that transmutes everything into back into wholeness and well-being. So that well-being is reestablished. Let us remember that this nature of the divine is creative, always giving of itself unto itself, and that anyone that is feeling challenged, unfulfilled, that they are absolutely being moved into that place where that creativity of spirit and the way it expresses through them is needed and valued, and that they are fulfilled in sharing it. Let us know for those who might be experiencing some sense of lack that this nature of God is infinite. It is the provider of infinite good to each and every one of us so that all needs are met beyond need just to a point of just being absolutely abundantly provided for and able to generously give back, which is God's nature. And let us remember that that nature of the divine in all beings is one of love. And as we know that that love is the truth of each and every one of us, we see any ideas or patterns that cause us to hold back or to not accept that love, to absolutely melt away as we step into greater expressions of love for ourselves and all beings. And so knowing the nature of love is always for greater good to be known and felt and realized, let us honor that impulse of God's love by setting our own individual intentions for good in silence. So whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, let us absolutely know that God is right there at the center of these situations. And as we know this truth, good is revealed for that is God's way. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And it's with a heart just filled with gratitude that I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen.
<laughs> oh, thank you so much, Margaret. And I hope you noticed how that collective consciousness of us coming together melted all that snow on those trees. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Blair, for facilitating that. <laughs> so this is a time in our service for our affirmative giving. Just a reminder of ways that you can give. Uh, first, uh, if you'd like to call in after the service, to do your, uh, give your donation over the phone via credit or debit card, you may do so for about 15 minutes after service. The number is 818-762-7566. Uh, you can also give online. You should be seeing a link right now, nhcrs.org forward slash give, or you can text the word give to uh, area code 818-457-3419. One nine, and of course, you can mail in your checks. Uh, once again, thank you so much for all the ways that you continue to support us. So, let us take this moment now to hold our hands to our hearts as we set our intentions for these gifts that we are sharing. And let us say together, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Mm. So, as we bring our service to a close, I uh, want to begin, first of all, by thanking everyone who was of service this evening. Uh, let me start out there in virtual land. Thank you so much to practitioners Christine Crawford and Carrie Brown for holding the high watch for us, holding vigil throughout the service. Uh, to our Zoom folks, uh, Mark Crowell, Brenda Jordan, and Ray Regan, thank you so much for your support. And on Facebook Live, once again, Melissa Allen, thank you, thank you, thank you for um, making sure we're getting out there to joining with everyone. Thank you, Adam, here in the sanctuary, once again, for making sure we're seen and heard up here. To, and, and for the support to make sure Margaret had <laughs> some accompaniments that sounded great. Thank you to Doreen and Blair who are here working all the computers and uh, making sure we're frozen and unfrozen on <laughs> our slides. To 
Um, Nikki, thank you so much for operating the second camera. And to our diva, Margaret, thank you so much for uh, the view. Yes, yes, for moving with the, the whole situation. And, uh, and thank you to all of you for being with us this evening. So again, just a quick reminder uh, regarding donations. Call the church, 818-762-7566, if you'd like to you make your donation over the phone, nhcrs.org forward slash give, where you can give a one-time or set up recurring donations, and, uh, or you can text the word give to 818-457-3419. We have prayer with a practitioner available after the service. If you'd like to be connected uh, with a practitioner, uh, you, if you're on Facebook Live, you'll need to go to uh, join us on Zoom. You can go to the website to get the Zoom link, and we can actually put you in a private breakout room with the practitioner from one-on-one -on -one prayer. Uh, we welcome email requests for prayers, uh, prayer at nhcrs.org is the email address, or you can call into the church, again, 818-762-7566. Option four allows you to leave a message with a prayer request, and we check the messages and the emails every evening and send those out to all of our practitioners. Wednesday evening, we'll be back next week, same time, same place on Zoom and Facebook Live, and my topic will be beneath the surface. Take a breath. <laughs> Living a Course in Miracles via Zoom. This group facilitated by a wonderful practitioner, Jeannie Laporte, will meet tomorrow evening. Uh, so that's April 15th from 7.15 to 9.15. All are welcome. Quick start class with Dr. Mark. Uh, we'll begin this coming Sunday, the 18th, and we'll go for three consecutive Sundays, so the 18th, the 25th, and May 2nd, from 11.15 to 12.45 on Zoom. And if you're interested in becoming a member of the North Hollywood Church, then uh, this is a class that you need to take uh, to be able to sign up and become an official member. It's also an opportunity to refresh your knowledge and use the Science of Mind principles. It's, a, like I said, a three-week class, and it's free to everyone. We just uh, ask that you please register online by tomorrow, April 15th. And when you do register, you will get the information and the ability to download the workbook and everything. So um, uh, do that as soon as possible. It gives us an idea of how many people will be joining. Um, so hope you'll take advantage of that. Virtual Circle of Healing via Zoom. Uh, that's going to be this Sunday at 1 p.m. And you're invited to join practitioner Mary Catherine O'Hart for this virtual healing journey and enrich your own sense of well-being. And uh, the Zoom link is on our website. Also, uh, we're doing a feeding of the homeless for our love and kindness ministry. We'll be doing that on Sunday. Uh, if you are interested in supporting this ministry, uh, please go to our website and you'll be able to get more information about how you can be of support. The Zoom virtual patio happens every Wednesday and Sunday before and after service where you can connect with your uh, church family. So. Feel free to join us to visit with folks before and after. Uh, it's about 20 minutes before, and then we hang out for however long <laughs> afterwards. The men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 a.m. All men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15 a.m. I love connecting with folks uh, every day during the week. It's, it's a wonderful experience. So to find out more about all of these things, how to join via Zoom, et cetera, go to our website, nhcrs.org, where you can also sign up to get weekly blasts and monthly newsletters. And with that, I'm feeling myself melting into a benediction. <laughs> I say we bring this service to a close with prayer. So please join me in prayer. And how grateful I am once again 
for all the ways that we have felt and connected with that one life, that one power, that one infinite invisible that we call God and how it has made itself felt, known, and realized throughout our time together. I know that each part of the service has supported us in that awakening to the goodness, the innate goodness that lies in each and every one of us and to experience it more fully as we go forward. And so I give thanks for all the blessings we've received and how they multiply as we move on into our day-to-day -day lives and how they ripple out into the world. And so giving thanks for it all and so much more, I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be and so it is. Together we say, Amen. Thank you again for joining us this evening. Let's close with our chant. <laughs>